Welcome, friends, to the Play Guitar Podcast. I am Lee, and I'm here to help you become the guitar player that you always wanted to be. So for better or worse, you got a sound already. You sound like you. There's a certain way that you approach the guitar that nobody else does. You're unique. But developing your style, developing your sound, making sure that you put your best foot forward, so that you showcase the things that are good, that separate you from everyone else. Well, that's something we all aspire to. We all dream of. You hear of the players that are said to be recognized with only just one note. You can hear them play one note. You know who it is. Santana is one. B.B. King. Eric Clapton. The way they play the guitar, it transcends just what note they chose to play. It's a voice. And this is a well-trained voice. It's been trained for years to communicate exactly what's needed for a certain song. So it's easy to give the credit for style to gear, right? So it's very easy to do. I'm, I'm not one of those people that's all or nothing on gear. I think gear is very important. I think it's half of what, you, what you've got, right? So your note choice and the way you play is half. And then the way you sound, what gear you use. You know, I'm not anti-gear and I'm not all about gear. Um, but it's easy to give all the credit to gear. Well, you know, I had this amp and this guitar and it made me sound like this way. I, I, there's a lot more to that. Eric Clapton is instantly recognizable on an acoustic guitar, as well as his regular Stratocaster that's got his preamp and into the Dumble amp that looks like a, you know, all that stuff. He, he, he sounds like Eric Clapton. So today, I want that for you. I'm going to take a little time today. Now, I'm going to look at what style really means. And I'm going to give you the three, what I think are the three simple things that you can do to let your best playing take center stage and you can communicate in your best way. Technique, this is what you hear a lot. The vibrato is one of those. So you hear about the BB King. His vibrato is very quick. Uh, it's a hand shaker. <laughs> it's not a guitar neck shaker and it's not going up and down the, 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 the string. It actually moves the string across by shaking his hand, but it's very fast. Very narrow as well, too. It's, it's not a wide vibrato. It's a narrow vibrato, right? That works for him. It's a very vocal sound, right? Uh, Jeff Beck. That's a very wide vibrato. Eric Clapton. He's a guitar shaker. He actually shakes the neck of the guitar and makes the string slip across the fret in a very interesting way. So have you ever thought about the way that you use vibrato or did like with most people, did it just kind of happen as you were playing? Oh, I want to sound more like the song and they shake the strings. So I'm going to, I'll just do that <laughs> there. Right. So thinking about the speed, thinking about, is it in time with the song, how wide it is? Um, is it a, a subtle on the string? Is it a, you know, a little less subtle moving the string? Is it extremely, uh, apparent if it's super wide that gets people's attention not always in a good way right so all of those things contribute to your vibrato and your vibrato contributes to your style your voice on the guitar the way that you play articulations that's the next part of technique uh raking strings uh hammer-ons and pull off do you do a lot of that uh, there's there's tons of different articulations. There's sliding in the note. You know, just like a singer. You hear some singers that hit the note clean every time they sing, and some that swoop into the notes, growl into it. That's what raking is, kind of growling into a note. Uh, Steve Ray Vaughan was a master at raking the strings. He was a master at all of the noises that the guitar makes to fill up fill up that three-piece that he was playing. So, so articulations are very important. Uh, to the way that you play and to your style. If you've never thought about them, you just did them, but didn't think about it, maybe, uh, you know, 
taking a minute to be deliberate with these things. Develop these as part of your style. Phrasing, right? Uh, not playing in run-on sentences. Having a very, you know, B.B. King. One note. And, and that's not just an exaggeration. He did a lot of that stuff. The older he got, the more um, economy of movement that he had. If you, if you look at some of the, the early 70s B.B. King guitar, but he's all over the place. Guy really plays. Uh, and as he became, uh, as the years went on, he started doing less and getting more from that. He would get more emotion, more feel, communicated more from playing less. The whole idea of the BB King box is you can do a lot of different things without having to move your hand. That's great for singers, you know. Uh, um, and but his phrasing would get smaller and smaller and sh shorter and, and, and more deliberate as we, as as time went on. Um, so phrasing is very important. How you play, how you create a lick, how long it is, how short it is. Does it resolve to a strong note? Does it end in a question? Do you have a lot of questions going on? But if you're going to get serious about your style, uh, one of the things that a lot of these people have done who have their own style is a lot of research. Listening to players that they love the way they sound and maybe taking a little bit from them, borrowing a little bit or stealing. <laughs> Depending on how you go. You know, but, but knowing what to play, how to play it and what not to play. Listening to other people. Uh, you know, B.B. King's style vibrato may not work for you. It's perfect for him. It may not be perfect for you. So spending the time going through old songs and listening to the, the sounds that you love and trying it out for yourself and seeing if that's something that you could incorporate with yours and knowing the reasons why they use those things. Uh, why did Clapton shake that the neck of the guitar? Because it was a very full, he has a very flowing sound. And this that's a gives you a very flowing vibrato. Uh, know the standards of the style of music that you're playing. What are the sounds that are used? It, this can be gear. This can be articulations. It can be vibrato. It can be the, the scale choices. These things, these things all work together. But know the standard songs of the styles of music that you play. So you have something to work from. If you're just coming in, when I first started playing, I was coming in with uh, Van Halen and Led Zeppelin. Those were the two bands that I wanted to play like. And I was coming in just learning them. And, you know, I learned that from uh, note for note a little bit and a little bit from, from ear, but I didn't understand it. And a ton of Van Halen deals with the blues and a ton of Led Zeppelin deals with the blues. And until I went and studied the blues and, see, and, and was able to see the, the steps before the things that led up to this style of music that I loved to, to, and wanted to play, I didn't understand it until that happened. So knowing the standards of the styles of music that you play, multiple styles, you know, know the standards in different styles. Um, and then the third one is working on your tone, making sure that you can have a style that's not going to fight you and is going to be appropriate for the, the communication that you want to get across. If you want to um, play some upbeat, happy blues that elevates people, um, a scooped metal sound probably not going to get you there, right? So the way that we craft our tones and with pedals and, and amps and, the, and guitars and those things, those are very important too, just as important, I think. The next section is listening and paying attention to what you play. Okay, we listen and pay attention to what other people play. But when we're playing, when you're sitting down playing, what's going through your mind at the time? Well, oh, I got I to gotta play a solo. People are going to hear this. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I, uh, can I remember these scale patterns? I don't even know if I remember them. I know this one, but what about if I move to... Oh, I'm not, I better get out of there. I don't want to be in that scale pattern at all. Uh, oh, yeah, that was a bad note. What am I going to do? Oh, I don't... I, I'm just going to give up. Forget it. So there's a lot of self-talk going on while you're playing. 
There's little mini decisions being made. There's a lot of anxiety. Maybe not for you, but for a lot of people. <laughs> There's a lot of anxiety when you're when you're playing lead guitar and, and just playing a song. Uh, should I do an extra strum pattern on this chord or not? Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure if it'll do that. Do you think the other people in the band would like that or not? Or maybe they won't. I'm, you, you see these this back and forth, these thoughts that are that are distracting you from what is actually going on in the moment. Think about that. Think about where your headspace is while you're in mid-song. Have you ever heard a band where they just sound like they're all listening to each other? One person does something, then the next person changes what they do to match that, and it builds and it builds because everyone is listening to what's going on. They know their parts so well that they don't have to think about it anymore, and it frees the mind up. All this worry, if you don't practice enough, if you don't have your parts down, all this worry is like air in a balloon. It fills the entire thing up. It expands. And there's no room for you to listen and to think, to pay attention. You're distracted when you're playing. So if I'm asking you to help develop your style, to listen to yourself and pay, pay attention to what you're playing, how can you do that if you're still freaking out <laughs> while you're playing? Record yourself. I know. Scary, huh? I don't like to do that. I don't want to hear. I might talk and then I'll hear my voice. So I don't even want to hear that. I definitely don't want to hear my guitar playing because then I'll, I won't sound as good as I think I do. <laughs> yeah. You see that? Right. So our, what are we doing? We're lying to ourselves. We, we think we sound better than we are. We're, we are worried we're going to sound so bad that we just won't be able to handle it. Right. But recording for yourself. Just recording your practice or just if you get a little idea, record it down. Or if, say, you do have a gig, just, you know, putting your phone off to the side, press record. Just so you have something It won't sound great, but you'll be able to hear kind of what's going on. Right. Gold, complete gold, game changing. Playing will never be the same if you get into the habit of recording yourself and listening to it. Why is that? Because you we're now in the headspace of where you are when you pay when you listen to your favorite songs. You are focused on it. And some really interesting things happen when you're focused on your own playing, you're listening to your own playing. You go, "Oh, I didn't really that's I thought sounded good." <laughs> or I wasn't even paying attention and listen to that. That's great. We miss so much about things we need to work on, things we need to clean up, or things that we do really well naturally that we didn't even know we do. We, we breeze by those things and leave them. Um, have you ever had an idea for a song? Even if you're not a songwriter, just one day you start, oh, that would be a good song, right? And what happened after that? Where did it, Do you still have it? Can you just recall that at any time? No, it's gone. Gone. If you don't, Record it or write it down in a few minutes, uh, that short term memory is over. <laughs> it is gone. I, th I, I wish I had so many different good ideas that are just gone because I didn't have access to somewhere to, to record them for a long time ago. Right. So having your phone, it, it's there, it's in your pocket. We're all addicted to this stupid thing that's listening to us all the time. <laughs> Why not make some use out of it? Use it to record yourself and pay attention to what worked and what didn't. Maybe wrote, write some notes down. But that paying attention to what worked is what I used to do um, in gigs. I used to pay very close attention when I'd try something new. I'd watch and see if anybody paid attention to it. And I might try it again, maybe play it in a different way and see if it worked. And if, if two or three times I played it, it didn't work, it's gone. I'm not playing that again. That was just my idea. No one else got it. We have those. We have those things that sound great to us that no one else likes. But then we have things that sound great to us that everyone likes. That's what we're trying to find. Those things are going to be part of your style. Uh, but the combination of those two things, recording yourself and paying attention to what worked, that is priceless. 
These are the things. Throw out the things that don't work. Hold on to, for dear life, the things that do. Okay, so I, I hope this got you kind of thinking about this. What is my style? When I play, what, what do I sound like? Do I do it well? Is, is there anything that I need to brush up on? Am I close or am I really far away? Uh, paying attention to, to, I know what my style is just because I've been playing for a long time and I made a bunch of dumb mistakes, and, but I made some, some happy accidents along the way too, which I capitalized on. And so there's some things that I play pretty much every time I play because it's, it, it's me. It's what I like to do. So we had what we had. We had technique, which was vibrato, articulations, and phrasing. We had research, knowing what to play and not to play, knowing the standards, and working on your tone, learning about tone. I didn't really get into that so much, but learning about if you say you have a like a Marshall amp, how do I get the best out of that Marshall amp? How did other people do it? Uh, is this the right amp for what I want to play? Maybe I you need a different amp. You need to, to research those things. And then finally, listening and paying attention, recording yourself, paying attention to what worked, even if you're not recording yourself. Just keep your eyes open, your ears open. Uh, the combination of those two is very powerful. Okay, so th this is something that's tough to teach. And it's something that um, some people take, it takes decades to find, but I don't think it has to for you. I think that if you, uh, pay attention to this and ma make a deliberate effort to work on your style. I think some really cool things could happen to you in a very short amount of time. So let me know. Let me know how it's going if you're working on it. Uh, okay. And remember, um, I still have a few coaching sections left. Uh, this isn't going to last forever. Uh, coaching is going really well. And, and uh, if you'd like to go and apply for coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching, I have a link in the show notes and also in the um, description of this podcast. And then I'll get right back to you and we'll see if we're a good fit for one-on-one for -on -one coaching. So that's a wrap. Thanks for joining me today for the Play Guitar Podcast. Make sure to hit the button below to subscribe to the show. If you've benefited from this podcast, please leave a favorable review over at Apple Podcasts. That is the best way for your podcast to get pushed out to other people. Uh, it, Apple Podcasts, there's a lot of these other podcast um, platforms that get your inf the show information from Apple, too. So it's not only just helping on Apple, it helps all those little podcast players out there as well, too. So th that would be really uh, helpful if you wanted to give back a little bit. Uh, I would really appreciate that, too. And also, uh, if you'd like to become a member of the Academy, uh, there's a lot of good things that you get there. We have all the stuff from the YouTube videos, all the backing tracks, and the, the tabs and the guitar profiles. And then also uh, we, we have our weekly Q&A session, which I do a little group teaching in there as well too. That's there for all of our members. And then finally, all of the roadmap and all the different videos, there's tons and tons of different videos from my years of teaching in there. And, uh, and I would love to see you, just see you over there so we could have some fun. All right, well, thanks a lot, everybody. And I will see you in the next podcast.